Let's see. Scuba gear, spare wiring, extra batteries, tanning oil. What else do I need for a trip through time? Hey, who took my toga? Oh, uh, hi there. Nice to see ya. In fact, we selected this site because it's so easy for tourists and Florida residents to get here by automobile. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> and this is my assistant and good ride arm, Figment. <laughs> Rinaldi, elephant. What? You've discovered our code word? No, oh, behind you. It's a big elephant. <laughs> w W Radio. You're in Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 170 for the week of May 16th, 2010. I'll start off this week's show with some Walt Disney World news and a few items from the rumor mill, including big news about a new Disney resort, updates on some attraction and dining changes, and some rumors about what or who else you may see coming to the Disney parks in the future. Next, we all visit Walt Disney World in different ways, and each presents different opportunities as well as challenges. And on our roundtable discussion this week, we'll talk about strategies, benefits, tips, and concerns when traveling to Walt Disney World as a single parent. Now, whether you travel as a single parent or not, chances are you'll find many tips and resources in this segment valuable and ways to enhance your own vacation experience. This week's new Walt Disney World Trivia Contest will test your knowledge of some of the relationships between Disney characters, attractions, and more, and play for a chance to win a prize that keeps on giving all year long. I'll have a few announcements and then play more of your voicemails at the end of the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. In this week's Walt Disney World news, the big, big news this week coming from Disney is that they announced plans for a new resort at Walt Disney World that's going to bring to life some of the best-loved characters and movies as Disney's Art of Animation Resort is going to be a new, one-of-a-kind, family suite resort designed around four themes, Lion King, Cars, Finding Nemo, and Little Mermaid, and it's going to be the first new resort built on property in seven years. Now, this resort specifically was designed with families in mind, not just because of the theming, but again, because they are going to feature family suites. There's going to be nearly 2,000 new units, including 1,120 suites and 864 themed rooms. Now, the suites are going to have a living room and a bedroom, which offer additional space beyond uh, other value resorts like Pop Century and the All-Stars. But like Pop Century, each is going to have separate courtyards which are anchored by icons from the different movies, such as a giant 35-foot-tall version of King Triton in the center of, obviously, the Little Mermaid scene. Like Pop Century, it is going to be a value resort, and standard rates are expected to start around the $82 per night and that will reopen in 2012. Now, this obviously is going to be located directly across from Pop Century, across the Generation Gap Bridge, on that 65-acre plot that was originally designed to be the second phase of Pop Century, which was abandoned back in 2001. Many guests have long lamented the fact that across the Hourglass Lake, those buildings did sit abandoned and empty, so it's exciting that it's not only going to be repurposed and rebuilt as a completely new resort, but in addition to bringing new, well-themed, value-conscious options to guests, 
it's also going to create about 800 new construction jobs as well. I'm very curious to hear what you think about the resort. And also, I'd love for you to come by the site and cast your vote in our poll. Tell us which of the wings you think that you'd like to stay in most and then comment on the blog post. Tell us which one you picked and why. And do you like these options? Would you have preferred to see something else chosen or a different theme? And share your thoughts. Come over to WDWRadio.com. Click on this week's show notes or click on the blog. Find out, find the post for Disney's Art of Animation Resort. And as I'm sure you know by now, big changes are coming to Star Tours over at Disney's Hollywood Studios as well as in Disneyland as the attractions are going to be taken down and reopen at a later date as Star Tours 2.0. We've talked about this in the past. This was originally announced back at the D23 Expo this past September. Well, we now have an official closing date for Star Tours on both coasts. In Disneyland, it's going to shut down July 27th But in Walt Disney World, you'll have until September 8th to take your last tour to the forest moon of Endor. As a matter of fact, there's actually going to be a special event called the Last Tour to Endor on August 14th during Orlando's Star Wars Celebration event. That special event is going to cost $75. It's going to be held from 8 p.m. until 1 a.m. There's going to be themed party areas fireworks, a Death Star disco. People are encouraged to come in costume, and I'll post links in the show notes where you can find out more about Star Wars Celebration. Over in Epcot, we have a new name for the Cantina de San Angel, which is currently being built on the lagoon side of the Mexico Pavilion. It is going to be renamed the Hacienda de San Angel when it opens later this year, probably September of 2010. Across the way, by the pyramid, all the construction walls that you may see if you're visiting in the next couple of weeks are the construction areas for the new permanent Donald Duck meet and greet area. But if you are looking for Donald, he is currently over by the International Gateway where he will be doing meet and greets and autographs until that area is complete. Now, speaking of construction walls, I happen to visit Walt Disney World and specifically the Magic Kingdom last week and there are many many recently installed construction walls that really run the entire length of the back of Fantasyland from Pinocchio's Village House all the way over to Toontown although they have been sort of plussed just a little bit because they've been adorned with some beautiful very large scale concept art as well as descriptions of what's going to be coming to that area once it reopens in 2012 and 2013. Uh, What I've done is I've actually taken a video and I've gone through the entire area of Fantasyland and shown you specifically not just the construction walls and where they're sort of uh, coming into the Fantasyland area, but detailed look at some of the concept art and some of the descriptions. And and I've posted that video not only in the iTunes feed, but if you go to www.radio.com, click on the blog post, you'll see the video of the Fantasyland construction. Again, would love to get your feedback on that. And for those of you that have lamented the closing of Pooh's Playful Spot and have asked me about the tree that was located in the center, it has been moved across the way. It's not open yet, but it has been moved across the way to the entrance of the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. So those of us who enjoyed going in to find the little hidden tribute to the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea attraction We hope that that remains inside the tree, now in front of many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Staying in the Magic Kingdom and in Fantasyland, It's a Small World is going to be closing for a relatively lengthy refurbishment from August 1st through October 22nd, 2010. Now that we haven't heard any specific information as to what the closure is for, but the speculation and the rumor is that we may be getting in Walt Disney World the same type of introduction of Disney animated film characters into the It's a Small World attraction. Now, I'm trying to get confirmation or denial of this one way or the other, but again, I'd like to hear your thoughts as to whether or not you'd like to see the introduction of some of those characters like they've done in Disneyland into the Walt Disney World version during that refurbishment. Moving over to Disney's Hollywood Studios and a quick refurbishment update, Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith is closed just for a little while until May 20th, 2010. It should reopen 
on May 21st. Nothing major uh, is expected to change in that attraction. And Muppet Vision 3D opened just a few days ago after its refurbishment. And like it or not, the updates that I've been getting have been that there are no changes to both the pre-show and the main show other than the fact the projection system has been upgraded, supposedly looks beautiful. There are some effects that used to be in the theater that have been broken or gone for a long time that are back. But most importantly, the picture quality is supposed to be amazing. Uh, and again, a lot of the effects really sort of enhancing the uh, the main show. The pre-show does have some uh, things adorning the new monitors. But again, the show itself has not changed. I'm looking forward to going back, checking it out for myself coming next week. Quick rumor um, that I wanted to touch on, something that I've been hearing about a lot lately, is that you may see more than just new rides and restaurants, specifically when Fantasyland reopens. Because what I'm hearing is that some of the effects inside the meet and greet areas, like for Cinderella and for Sleeping Beauty, are going to be something like guests have never seen before. And beyond just the princesses inside these interactive meet and greet experiences, if you love things like Remy inside Chefs de France over in Epcot, you may love what's coming to the Be Our Guest restaurant. Because I'm hearing that you may just see more and a lot more from Disney's Living Character Initiative in the all-new Fantasyland. Now, to that end, last week, a video was posted online that I'll link to in this week's show notes demonstrating a test of a new Mickey Mouse meet-and-greet character in Disneyland. Now, he's new because he has completely articulating and animated eyes and mouth. And beyond that, he actually speaks to and reacts to guests who are coming up and meeting him. Now, while he's not a permanent part of the parks on either coast yet, I think he may be the first of many next and big leaps towards making characters in various ways and environments interact in real time and on a much more personal level with individual guests and small groups. So definitely, definitely stay tuned. I think especially coming later on this year, because of what we saw at the audio animatronics exhibit at the D23 Expo is and what we're hearing is any indication there are some very, very impressive experiences that are going to enhance what we see and what we do inside the Disney parks. Speaking of interactive experiences, I was a little disappointed last week when I went to the Magic Kingdom, got there for rope drop, hurried over to the Haunted Mansion not just to get on one of my favorite classic rides and to do some final work on the Liberty Square audio guide, but to hopefully catch a glimpse of the interactive test queue that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. And I'm sorry to say that it was gone, but it does make me wonder what else may be coming before Fantasyland opens and before maybe the summer season starts and what other attractions may get some of these interactive queues. And again, I'd love to hear your thoughts come by post on this week's show notes over at www.radio.com which cues in Walt Disney World do you think could benefit from interactive experiences what are some of the ideas that you might have or things that you'd like to see or if you don't like interactive the, the idea of interactive cues at all post your comment share your thoughts as well last couple of quick things the McDonald's over in downtown Disney is now closed the conversion to Pollo, Pollo Campero The Latin uh, chicken fast food chain is underway. That's expected to open later on this year. And quickly, outside the parks, but still Walt Disney World related, because I think a lot of people love land and sea vacations and think February 2011, WDW Radio Cruise on the Disney Dream, pre and post days in Walt Disney World. But over on Castaway Key, Pelican Plunge, the new set of water slides, is reportedly already open in advance of what was supposed to be a later summer debut. Now, the plunge features a floating platform with two water slides. One is an enclosed corkscrew, and the other is a 140-foot-long open slide into the ocean. There's also a giant bucket that dumps water on guests, water cannons where you can shoot targets in the water. I definitely think a research trip to Castaway Key is definitely in order 
so I can more accurately re- report on what's going on there. A couple of other quick things I want to point out to you that I have up on the site. I always tell you that there is so much more to explore in Walt Disney World, and you might not know it's there, but guests of all ages can enjoy catch-and-release fishing led by expert guides in the waters in front of the Magic Kingdom and in Epcot, various locations throughout property. I had a chance to spend a morning on the water and shoot a video of it. You can go to www.radio.com, find the video there about the catch and release fishing expedition. Also, want to point out to you another blog post, something else to help you enhance your vacation experience. You know that whenever you visit the Disney parks, and I tell you to always look up and look down and look around because there's so many wonderful details. Well, you might not realize it, but you can find so many references to Disney animated films and movies. And in fact, you might not realize that you can also find replicas or even real props from some of those movies and TV shows. Well, this week we have a new guest blog post entitled Pirates of the Caribbean from the parks to the movies and back again. Where we send you on a virtual treasure hunt in Walt Disney World, helping you to explore one of our favorite classic attractions and go on a treasure hunt of your own to find many of the real movie props that have been hidden away by Imagineers in and after the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. Again, go to www.radio.com, click on the blog there, you'll find the post. And if you have any comments about anything that you've heard in this week's news or rumors segment, any news or rumors that you want to share, you can post on this week's show notes. You can also post in Facebook or in the forums at WDWRadio.com. There are many ways to travel to Walt Disney World, and I don't mean modes of transportation, but ways that we visit the parks. And not every person goes to Walt Disney World as part of the mom, dad, two and a half kids, dog, and white picket fence family. Many of us travel solo or as part of large groups with friends and really everything in between. And every way that we travel and tour the parks presents different opportunities as well as different challenges. And one of those ways is as a single parent, because I think that solo parents face special issues when they're traveling, ranging from cost to comfort to safety and so, so much more. And you might think that visiting Walt Disney World this way is the same as every other, but there are certain things to keep in mind and certain ways to get the most out of your trip. So this week, I'm joined by two single parents, a mom and dad of kids in different age groups to talk about visiting Walt Disney World as a single parent. So I first want to welcome to the mini roundtable, Bonnie Smith. Bonnie, welcome. Hey, Lou. It's great to be here. I'm excited. I am excited to have you. We've been talking about this segment for a long, long time. So uh, finally, Mark Lorenzo's agent let him come back on the show. He is a single (laughs) parent and a Disney mom. Scratch that. He's a Disney dad as part of the 2010 Disney World Moms panel. So, Mark, welcome back. And I'm happy negotiations are finally over. Yes. Hi, Lou. It's good to be back on the show. And like I said, anytime. And I've been... uh, Wanting to talk about this for a long time, this subject. Yeah, you both kind of brought this up to me uh, individually and at our meet of the month. Yes, it really was about a year ago. Uh, we sat down and talked about it, and unfortunately, it's taken so long to get it together. But I think this is going to be a valuable segment. And I, look, I think there are some people who right off the bat are going to say, this doesn't apply to me. I, you know, I'm not a single parent. But remember, you know, many people travel to Walt Disney World for conferences or for meetings or as part of groups and oftentimes mom or dad may be taking the kids to the parks on their own and there's other ways um, that you might be traveling alone with your child or your nephew or niece or your grandchild whoever it might be and you might be surprised how some of the things we talk about today are going to be more applicable to more people than it might expect so First things first, let's kind of introduce you guys a little bit and and why you're so well qualified to talk about this. Bonnie, first, tell me a little bit about where you're from, how old your child or children are, and 
maybe the first time you took your kid slash kids to Walt Disney World as a single parent? All right. Well, I live in Lake Placid, Florida. It's in the center of the state, and it's about 90 minutes from Disney World. Um, my kids have been going to Disney since I start them young, Lou. Uh, five weeks old was one of them, and three weeks old was the other one. And um, since I've been a single mom since um, I have two boys, since my boys were one and four years old, and we've been and I've been taking them there as a single mom ever since. And now they are twenty and seventeen years old. A whole different set of challenges, I'm sure they present to you at twenty and seventeen. <laughs> but exactly. big, big kudos and hugs to you for taking your child when you're when you're measuring your first trip to Walt Disney World in terms of how many weeks old they are, <laughs> as imposed to months. I, I think that's awesome and. I'm sure people are saying they'll never remember anything. I'm sure you remember their first trip, and I think that's what's most important about it. Absolutely, it was. It was about. It was for me at that point, but it was still great. I would do it again. <laughs> awesome, uh, Mr. Lorenzo. What about you? Where you're from? How old your son is? And when you yeah. first took him as a single parent? So I'm I'm from Corning, New York, which is in upstate New York, and um, so I've been a single parent since 2002. So it's been about. Eight or eight, eight or so years, and in 2007, I mean, I had vacationed other places with my son alone, but in 2007, I decided to try to take a trip to Disney, and I didn't really know with just my son, and I didn't really know much about Disney at that point, other than you know some childhood memories and some you know young adult memories. But I mean, it was kind of a adventure, you know, and I was uncertain about a lot of things uh, on the trip about how to deal with just being only one parent, you know, and traveling to Disney and through the whole thing. So he was nine years old at that point. Um, and we've been probably three times together um, since. And we've made so many memories. It's so incredible. So to both of you, Bonnie first and then, and then Mark, what was that feeling like the first time you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my child solo to Walt Disney World, did you make any special preparations? Did you do any special planning where you're like, hey, my kid's five weeks old, I'm just going to wing it and see what happens. And what did you learn from some of those early trips? Bonnie first. Um, I pretty much would say that I, well, I, I know Disney World very well. I've been going there a lot since, you know, since they opened. So I felt comfortable. It wasn't a new place for me to be. Um, I kind of knew my way around. Um, going there with a with a baby is a different thing, and I just would kind of wing it as I went along. Um, I always made sure that I had stroller with me. That was one of my big uh, biggest tips because the the kids get tired and they want to you know get tired of walking or whatever, and you want place to hold all your goodies and push them around in the stroller. So that was one of the things and. I I used a lot of their, uh, Disney has so many amenities for children and babies, their baby care center. I definitely took advantage of that. I was in there a lot. I think that's a great, you know, great benefit that they have. So are you a a stroller renter or a stroller bringer with her? I've done both. Um, It just depends on what was happening at the time. Sometimes I bring mine and sometimes I would rent them actually the kids sometimes like to rent them because they're cool and you know (laughs) take them for spins (laughs) they think it's like a ride my my kids used to think that that, that the strollers were were a ride they also too liked uh, renting the strollers there I often I did also like you Bonnie I took my kids when they were very very young my daughter was about six eight months or so Uh, one thing I did find is I liked bringing my own stroller with me not because I really liked having extra things to, to lug on and off the monorail, but remember when you leave the Magic Kingdom in the afternoon or at night and your kids are tired and they want to just hang on or go to sleep, you have to leave that rent-a-stroller there. So getting mm-hmm. to and from the monorail and into the resort, it's nice to have the little fold-up uh, stroller with you. Uh, Mark, what about you? What about you know the, the preparations or the things that you learned from the first time that you took your son. And I'm sorry, remind me again how old he was the first time you took him so long. He was nine years old, my son was, uh, the first time. So I really knew a little bit about Disney, but I mean, I kind of learned a lot 
in preparation for the trip, and I would definitely advise that. I went, I booked through AAA, so they, I booked a package. And you know, being a single parent, you're very concerned about. And I'm sure we'll talk about this later. Is the cost and you know, being able to afford a vacation. And we ended up staying at um, All Star Sports, and it was wonderful. We ended up using Magical Express, so I learned about that to get back and forth. And we used all Disney transportation, so it was wonderful not to have to drive places, you know, and once I got the hang of, you know, how to get on the buses, and there was a lot of questions and stuff, and I, back then, I, when I started listening to podcasts to learn more, and I've learned so much through listening to podcasts like yours, and some other ones, too, is that, you know, how to get around at Disney, you know, how to, what are the specials, we also went during a free dining uh, uh, promotion, so all of our meals were paid for, so I've done that the last three years and they just announced it again um, for this year too which is a it's a way to save money definitely <laughs> you know and I was all about that but I kind of you know I've made mistakes in touring for Di- you know around Disney and stuff like that because I didn't know but I mean doing some preparation before you go and you know kind of having a little plan of what parks you're going to go to and things like that does help out and it, it was a little scary you know because I'm like wondering, you know, is my son going to be busy? And that question was answered. There's more than enough to do at Disney. Uh, you know, will he like all the rides? Will, will he be able to go on all the rides? I mean, there's a lot of questions like that, too, as well. Yeah, so let me ask you, you talked about planning and preparation. There's some different schools of thought. Some people are, hey, commando style, I'm planning it out. I've got the Excel spreadsheets. You know, laugh because you know it's true. You've got multiple sheets with all well, kinds of colors. I, yes. I, I used to have Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> so as a single parent, do you think that there is, does going w- with a child solo, does that change that at all? Do you think it's, it's better to have a more flexible schedule? Would you rather have a more regimented schedule so you, you have things planned out? Um, or does it not really matter? I'll let you go first, Bonnie. Okay, I am more of a just let the day unfold as it as it does. Um, probably because I go more often, um, and I'm I'm just happy being there. I'm happy just to be walking down Main Street, and if you know we're walking along, and one of my kids wanted to stop and talk to the, you know the street performers talk to the you know any of the characters anything that was going on and we wanted to stay there for you know a half hour then i would just let them do whatever they wanted to do just to you know and and they were happy and i was happy and that was a way that we got to do a lot of things that most people don't even know you know that they have there so we i wasn't a run to you know this attraction that attraction boom 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 but that is also because i went a lot so you know that's a different thing than mark he would he would only go you know a few times so he had to i would sure think he would want to make sure that he sees certain things and i think lou you i think you have to gauge it on the needs of your child i mean you know your child the best and your children and um you know depending on their age group but there have been times where like i alter plan i'm a uber planner but mainly you know for hitting the rides first so you don't have to wait in line as as much you know hitting the real popular ones so like using touring plans and stuff like that but you have to be flexible enough to realize if your child is tired midday go back to the hotel or you know if you realize about six o'clock at night that hey you know there's no more left in your child it's going to be miserable you know (laughs) to keep on going and watch that firework or watch the parades or, or, you know, stuff like that, then sometimes it's best to kind of cut and run and go back to the hotel and just relax. So I mean, yeah. you've got to be really, really mindful. Even though you want to enjoy it to the fullest, you really got to be mindful. And also sometimes being a single parent, I'm sure we'll talk about this, adds you some extra flexibility too as well. Because, I mean, you don't have as many people wanting to do different things. I mean, if you're, you know, if you have one or two ch- children, you know, you can kind of cater to them. And I recently, the last couple trips, I kind of made a day where I asked my son what he wanted, to, or let him decide what he wanted to do toward the end of the trip. So I usually take like nine or ten day trips, and you know, once a year with him, and that's been changing. But I, you know, I toward the end of the trip, I give him a day and say, okay, what park do you want to go to? What rides do you want to go to? To give him some choice. And I always try to be 
flexible with my plans. Usually my plans revolve around, and you're going to love this one, where I'm going to eat, especially on the 390. <laughs> we usually try to sit down at a table service once a day, give you a nice break. You know, we spend two hours eating, and we have a ball, and, it, you know, it kind of refreshes you, and then you go back out there and hit the parks with gusto, you know. But you always have to be flexible, and you always have to be watching your child, and, you know, you're always putting your child's needs or shoulder knees ahead of yours, you know, and just determining how long and how fast and how hard you go. Wait, yeah, don't I'm sorry, set your... Oh, I was just going to say, don't set your expectations too high. You know, just don't expect to see everything. Um, just like Mark said, it's your child kind of determines where you're going to go next, and if they're having a good day, it could end up being a late night. If not, you might have to call it a day early and try again the next day. Right, and because you're solo, you you don't have necessarily that support system of another parent to either, you know, help out taking care of somebody that wants to do something different, or a family that can split up, or one go rest, one go eat, one go to the water park, whatever it might be. But mm -hmm. you both touched on something that I want to sort of take a step back and address because I think whether your child is five weeks, five months, five years old, or Mark, even for you, nine, even Bonnie, if your child is seventeen, there's something that as a single parent, you need to be probably more conscious of than anything else when you're traveling anywhere. And that's that sense of safety and security. And mm -hmm. the one thing that I have found, and, and you guys can maybe correct me if you think differently, is that Walt Disney World is probably the one place that as a single parent, the level of comfort as far as the safety of you and the safety of your children uh, is probably highest as opposed to you know, let's go to South America for the weekend. If you go to Walt Disney World, there is that sense that we all have of safety and security. What in your mind, tell us how that played in maybe the first time that you've gone. How does it play in now? Even Mark, with you as your child, who maybe is 9, 10. He's 12 now. Yeah. He's 12 now. So. Who may have, he says, oh, you know what, I want to, my, some of my friends are here. I want to go off on my own, Dad. I want to go do this. How does that sense or concern of safety play in and do you make any special preparations beforehand Bonnie as always ladies first <laughs> um, yes um, and as you know their ages as they grew that changed um, I always felt very safe at Disney I, I feel like it's you know a very safe place to go as a single parent um, they are they're all about safety I mean they you know there even was a time when my son was I would guess he was around nine years old and we were at the studios and um, he did get separated from me. We were leaving and I turned around and he wasn't there and uh, I had instructed him beforehand, you know, or both of them if they ever got lost to look for the, you know, the cast members with the name tag and go up to them and so they knew what to do and I, and I was scared at the time and I, you know, retraced my steps and went back and it you know, within, say, five minutes, I came across, you know, he was standing there with a cast member and little tears rolling down his cheeks. But, you know, he was OK. And, you know, that just proves right there to me how safe they are. And, um, you know, so I feel really good about that. As they got older, I did allow them to go on attractions by themselves when they were probably 12, I would say. You know, and I felt I did feel safe. Um, you know, some I would sit. A lot of times they want to go on by themselves, and they think it's really cool to go on by themselves. So I would sit at the exit and wait for them. You know, when they were older, and I always felt felt safe there. I, I, uh, that's why I went there so much with them. Yeah, and you uh, you touched on something that that I did with my kids. I think a lot of parents do, or definitely should do. And one of the very first things I did, obviously, when my kids were old enough to understand, was introduce them to the cast members. I would walk up to more than one cast member because they'd be dressed in different costumes. And the, the constant between them all, obviously, was the name tag. And I said, listen, if we ever get separated, you find one of these people and they will help you and you stay with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I also, as they got older, would talk about specific meeting spots. So if you walked into the studios, I said, okay, you know, meet right here by the big hat. If we get separated, what, mm -hmm. what else? Uh, Mark, what about for you? I, I, you know, I really think this is the number one issue for single parents because I think 
safety and, and making sure that you've got, you know, you know where your kids are at all times. Because any and for parents, dual parents, you know, mother and father, it's it's the same concern. But because you only have one pair of eyes watching your children, so it's very easy in this day and age. But that being said, at Disney, I've always felt safe. And that was one of my first concerns. My first trip down there is, am I going to be able to keep track of him in a public place? Because we had this discussion a long time in airports and things like that. Is you, you cannot be out of my sight any time. So, and, but at Disney, it, it's very, very, you know, very, very safe. And it just, it's a, it, it's a different feeling than I get in a regular public place. I've taken my son on vacation to other places and, you have to watch, you know, watch him like a hawk and make sure he's standing next to you the, the, the whole time. But I also, even at Disney, I also do some things. There are some tips and that I picked up along the way. Like, for example, in the morning, take a picture of him with your camera or cell phone, with what outfit he's wearing. And they're just practical things. Um, I actually had a pair of dog tags made for him with my phone number, my cell phone number, and my contact information that he would wear when we were at the park. Um, I've heard of also things that you can have, put them on their shoes, you know, with the contact information too, as well as training them to go to a cast member if he was ever separated. Now, as he's gotten older, I mean, literally, I'm confident that, not that he would ever get separated from me, but he could find his way back to the hotel using Disney transportation now, because he knows enough about the transportation, you know, he was telling people how to get to places the last trip we were on. So, I mean, just random strangers, they were asking him questions how to get you know, what block to take to here or there. So if he ever did get separated, I know he'd know what to do, and he, he could probably actually make it back to the hotel by himself. So, yeah, my and kids... And I'm looking forward to the day when you get him more responsibility where he can ride, ride alone, and, you know, we're, we're starting to get towards that point. Bonnie, what were you going to say? I was just saying my, my boys going so often, they knew their way around all, you know, they knew their way around where everything was. Um, and... Nowadays, when they get older, even close to your son's age, Mark, I mean, a lot of them have cell phones now, and, you know, that's that's the way I keep, keep in touch with them now. Of course, my kids are older, but, you know, they, mm-hmm. you just call them on their cell phones. It's, that's very convenient. <laughs> yeah, and you, you probably could even buy them a track phone, you know, just for yes. use in the park or whatever, you know, a pay-as-you-go plan. That's, that's a great idea. All good ideas. Yeah, I've even seen parents uh, put a little walkie-talkie on their kids. So even if the kid Mm -hmm. couldn't use it, if he gets to meet up with a cast member, mom or dad can kind of beep through, the cast member could pick it up, and they can get together. But, Mark, you gave some great tips, ones that I definitely wanted to mention. Certainly, I I know uh, parents think about these a lot. In addition to taking a picture of where you parked at the airport or where you parked in the goofy parking lot, take a picture of your children in the morning on your cell phone, not just necessarily with your camera, so you have it with you at all times. One of the things I started doing was uh, I have um, I have luggage tags that I sort of give out at meets and as prize giveaways and things like that. And often when I see a family with young kids, I give the kids one, not just because they can chew on it because it's soft plastic, but I tell the parents, put your contact information on there, loop it through your kid's belt buckle. This way, if they get separated in the parks, they're big, they're blue, a cast member can see it and can t- contact you back. Uh, mm-hmm. But the thing that's consistent is Again, that sense that we all have had with safety and security for our kids. I am the way overprotective father of my daughter. I know that. But there is a certain comfort level I have in Walt Disney World, the same that my parents had years ago when I went as a kid. And I was probably, Mark, maybe your son's age. And my parents would let me ride the monorail late at night after the parks closed. So we'd go back to the Contemporary. They would be there. And I could ride on the monorail by myself or with one of my friends. I know um, I was a geek <clears throat> very early on, but there was that sense of, and listen, my mother's the most overprotective person in the world. She's actually standing behind me as I'm recording right now. So that sense of security that she had there is really a testament to the comfort level uh, that we all seem to have. And I think that single parents should have, especially if maybe you are a new single parent, say, you know what, I'm not quite ready to go out into the big world and go on vacation with my child this, I think, is that one place that you can do it, probably no matter your child's age. So that brings up another point that's kind of related to that. So I still will, like, if you go into reuse the restrooms, I still will go in with my son and 
wait there even if I don't have to use the facilities. And so Bonnie and I were talking before the show about, you know, what happens. So some of these questions are on the, the mom's panel as far as, and, you know, questions about, like, if I have an odd number of children or if I have, let's say, I have an opposite sex child, I mean, what do you do at Walt Disney World when you need to use the facilities? And one of the things we discussed is there's a lot of family restrooms. You know, it's like if I had a daughter, you know, I'd probably use one of those family restrooms, you know, first before I would take her into, you know, a, a gentleman's or men's bathroom. But, and that kind of relates to the same thing as what if you have an odd number and you're going on a ride? You know, how do you deal with that? And maybe we can talk about that a little bit later in the tip. Yeah, that's a, a great point. Something I didn't even think about, about what do you do sort of for the opposite sex restrooms and things like that. Things are sometimes going to force you to possibly be separated. It's great to know that there are those family restrooms there. Bonnie, you mentioned earlier, I'm a huge, huge fan of the baby care centers. Um, one thing you should know as a single parent or any parent is where they are in each of the four theme parks because they will very quickly become your best friend if you have uh, infants and toddlers um, going with you to the parks. But yeah, you know, how do you do that too about maybe those attractions that you can't necessarily ride in the same ride vehicle with? Um, it has that Does that crop up a lot? Has that ever become an issue for either of you guys? I don't remember it being an issue too much because I would usually just have the three of us um, and we could go on most things, you know, with, with the three of us. If it was an issue, then I just wouldn't be able to do that attraction on that trip. I would have to wait until I came another time and had someone else with me. Um, or and, like and uh, I, if you want a rider swap, right? Yeah, I mean, if you have a child who's too yeah. young to ride a certain ride, you can talk right. about that a little bit. Or if my older son, you know, he wanted to ride by himself, so I would ride, you know, in front of him, like, you know, say on Peter Pan's flight, I would ride in front of him with my younger son, and then he would want to go by himself, and then I would let him go behind us, you know, and then wait for him at the exit, and, you know, I felt safe doing that, and he thought he was cool because he could be in his own vehicle. Yeah, and, I, and the and one most, thing I... I most ride vehicles... Um, like Haunted Mansion, you can fit three if, you, you know, your kids are small and, and, you know, and the ones like Thunder Mountain where you can only fit two across, I mean, mm-hmm. you could either, like Bonnie said, go ahead of them or go behind them. You know, put your two kids together, let's say if you had three people in your family, and sit behind them or ahead of them and then instruct them not to leave the exit, you know, until you get there or if you get there before them. So there's different strategies you can use. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the one thing I noticed, too, is that cast members are very, very cognizant, for the most part, of the children who are rotting themselves. And, and I do see them sort of looking around because they must know that a parent is within distance somewhere to make sure the two of them connect before or after the ride so that, that this child isn't sort of wandering aimlessly. And, and that to that point, the cast members are wonderful when that happens. And every now and then you do get a lost parent because kids don't get lost at Walt Disney World. The parents are the ones that get lost. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I'm sure we've seen, you know, this is where their training and Walt Disney World shines because you see the way that these cast members are able to calm a child's fears and, and bring them down so that, that that fear and that panic goes away very, very quickly for them. Yes, they do a, a great job with that. I uh, I can attest to that. They, they are really great at that. And I, I wanted to go back to the... the Go back to the restroom for a minute. Um, in the <laughs> well, in the the baby care centers, they have the little small small uh, toilets for the the kids, which I think that's great as a single parent. If you have a little one, I mean, you can go in there and you know stand outside with your other child while the one goes goes in there. So they have a lot of uh, you know use the facilities that are there because there are a lot there for parents single or not and that a lot of people do not take advantage of and they're really great yeah and the baby care centers too um are you know great places if you have more than one child and you you don't want to sort of cram into a tiny stall there's a little area out you know that's right outside i'm thinking specifically like of the magic kingdom right outside 
where like the changing room and, and the, the toilets are that have little tables and little chairs and there's a cast member in there and there's a TV and cartoons and coloring so that mm-hmm. if you do have to sort of turn away for a second to change the other child or to help the other child change their clothes, you don't have to panic mm-hmm. about where are they going, where are they running because there is nowhere for them to go. They're right yes. there in the baby care center with you. Yes, absolutely. And again, the cast members there are very specifically trained to help you as a single parent deal with some of those things. I have done it before where I've taken one of my children in. They see mm-hmm. that I was completely unaware of what, what I was supposed to be doing and came over and helped <laughs> me out. So, <laughs> excuse me. But and speaking yeah. of cast members, always, you know, make your request known. You know what I'm saying? If you need help or you need something, you know, don't be afraid to ask because they're always more than accommodating to meet your You say, hey, listen, I'm a single parent and, you know, my son wants to ride this or my daughter wants to do this. You know, is there anything that we can work out or, you know, how can we accommodate this and still have all your, you know, fear, if you have any fears or stop delayed, you know? There's limits, though. When I start asking cast members to help me change poopy diapers, that's when they, you know, <laughs> well, listen, they, sir, they you're, you're on your own. They probably won't do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so... You know, something else to consider, too, again, in sort of the planning of, of making that solo trip with your child to Walt Disney World is something that, that we all have to keep in mind for the most part when we're planning, which are ways to make it affordable because now it's just you and the child and certainly saving money, getting the most value for your dollar is very important. And, and I'll mark this time I'll ask you um, because I, as not just a single dad, but probably as a member of the mom's panel, I have to assume this is a question that you probably got asked a lot. So do you have any tips for ways to make the trip affordable for single parents? Yes, I do. I, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in you can definitely make a trip to Walt Disney World affordable. I mean, I, before my first three trips with my son, we're all at Value Resort. Um, that's a really good one. Go to a Value Resort and during Value Season, which is either late end of summer, which is like August 15th on, like, I know some schools start early, but that's a really good idea. Um, during peak times of year, the hotel rooms are actually more expensive. I mean, I have just to throw out a figure, I think I was getting uh, in a package, like, for about $82 a night, you know, which is very relatively inexpensive for, you can't even get out hotels outside of Disney for that some places. So, and then I made use of the free dining, offer um, which paid for two meals a day basically and snacks um, that was a huge thing I utilized Magical Express to get to and from the airport and I did not rent a car for the first couple trips lately I have been but um, I use Disney transportation to get around once you figure that out it's, it's you know pretty and it, it saves you the hassle of trying to figure out where you're going so you can kind of relax uh, there are times on the you know, Disney transportation, like at peak times or after shows or fireworks, it, it's so crowded and you have to wait a long time. So if you can avoid those times, it's probably a good thing. Uh, but, I mean, if you use it right, it can be a great service that saves you money. And, you know, there's ways even in dining to, you know, like splitting meals. A lot of the meals are very huge, you know. So, I mean, you might be able to, I've heard of ways of like, buying a double cheeseburger and buying an extra bun and splitting the fries. I mean, things simple as that or eating breakfast in your room, like bringing granola bars and, and things like that, uh, save you a lot of money. So something else I wanted to <clears throat> talk about, too, was obviously we love taking our ch- children and making the memories for both, you know, mom or dad and the child are of paramount importance. And there's important things to do to to make sure you spend that quality time with your kids. But have either of you run into the occasion where, hey, you know, I'm going to be down there for nine days. Listen, there's only so much of little little Lou I can take at one point, or I want to do some things for myself. Have you ever looked into doing or some of the ways that you as a single parent can make some time for yourself and enjoy either the parks or Walt Disney World, say, in the evenings? Um, I've definitely done that. Um, my son, well, both of my kids love to go to the, uh, the Sandcastle Club was their favorite. Um, that's in the Beach Club. It's a, a child care 
that they have. I think you have to be, if I'm correct, four, four years old um, to go in there. And when my, my other son was small, my older one would love to go in the Sandcastle Club. I mean, he couldn't wait to go. They do crafts in there with them. They get to play video games. They watch movies. Um, he loved it. So I would, I would take him to the Sandcastle Club and then maybe go to dinner. And then I would just have my younger one with me. Or um, if, I would, if I had a trip that I had taken with my parents or someone else, then and both my kids were old enough, they would both go to Sandcastle Club. And I think they could stay there till midnight, and then we would all go, you know, out to dinner and come back and pick them up. And they really enjoyed that. Um, we did. We've done Sandcastle Club and the, I think it, I believe it's called the Cubs Den in the Wilderness Lodge. Right. Um, we've done both of those. I think those are the only two that my kids have tried. But they both, I would recommend those very highly to to anyone, single parent or not, because. They both loved it, and it's a way to kind of get out, have a meal, you know, get a little break, and um, and everybody's happy. Yeah, once again, I am completely on board with you. Um, m- there are many of the deluxe resorts that have the kids' club, like the Boardwalk and the Grand Floridian. The Polynesian has the Neverland Club, which I so wish I could go and check out. <laughs> uh, my kids love the Sandcastle Club, and I love the Beach Club, so it works out very, very well. Mm-hmm. They are for kids uh, ages 4 to 12. I do believe they go only until midnight, and it's about $10 per hour. But you're right. They do crafts. They play games. They have uh, Disney movies going on. Um, and there's, of course, that very, very safe and secure. Only the parent that checks them in can you know check them out. There's beepers that you can get in case they do need to contact you for some reason. Again, I being the overprotective father, I will tell you that the only place I've ever felt comfortable leaving my daughter other than with my family and even that's kind of suspect sometimes was at the Sandcastle Club and at the on the Disney Cruise Line uh, feeling that sense of security that I could leave them there there was nowhere for them to go there was no way they were going to get out of that room or out of that space without me being there mm-hmm. uh, something else to consider too whether you are staying uh in Walt Disney World and maybe you need somebody to stay a little bit later if you have maybe you're going to go see Cirque du Soleil you want a night downtown Disney there are also in-room babysitting services and I've actually used this as well too partially because I wanted to and needed to partially because I wanted to research and experience it for myself Um, I did use one of the services that's down there um, that actually it's not endorsed by Disney but Disney sort of gives it its I don't want to say they're blessing, but Disney knows about them and they're kosher in Disney's eyes. How's that? <laughs> uh, and it's kids' night out. And you, we called up, made the reservations, uh, met the girl who came by to watch, got that sense of security again, and were able to leave my kids for a couple of hours um, while we went out to the boardwalk or, or whatever it might have been. So those are great options because you do need to make sure that you as a parent have some time on your own and get out and maybe if you want to go to jelly rolls maybe not the best place for a five-week-old so (laughs) so uh, and to that end do you here's something else do you when you travel as a single parent have you ever considered or have you ever in the past traveled with other single parents or other individuals so you are not it's not just you and your child there's another group with you as well or another you know mom and dad with a child with you as well I did that quite a bit. In fact, I would, um, I would, most of my trips, I tried to encourage others to come along with me. Um, from my parents who, who went with me a lot, um, my brother would go with me. Um, I had, I've had some really great, uh, times with, uh, my best friend who's a single mom as well. So she would go with her two boys and I would go with my two boys. We've, uh, rented out cabins at Fort Wilderness and we've just had a great time and you know the boys are running running around in the cabin and we're happy and um, I've done that quite often so those are some of my some of my best times when I go with you know other single parents or you know grandparents of course are great too extra hands and I I uh, and I did go without them as well but it's I, I don't. That's I guess it's more enjoyable. Yeah, that's definitely a great tip, Bonnie. I mean, last August I went with my sister and my niece, and it was wonderful because that kind of segues into the, some of the pros and cons. Because when you're alone with your 
your kids. You don't can't really talk adult talk to mm-hmm. anybody. Like mm-hmm. when you're eating this great meal, you can't say, "Oh, this is so great," you know, because it, the kids not going to care. You know, they they're happy that they have food. You know, right. <laughs> and, and so it's so much different. It has a different dynamic. You know, but if you're afraid to go. You know, as a single parent, why not invite another single parent to go with you? You'll have a ball. Yeah, you can split the the cost of the room, and it it makes it more affordable for for everyone. Right, and there's also obviously things like adjoining rooms. So if you want to put the kids mm-hmm. into one room, leave the door open in between. You guys can sit there and, and talk or watch Stacy all night, whatever it might be. And I think too. <laughs> As single parents, and this holds true for solo travelers or groups or whatever it might be, if you want to meet other people and talk with other people and even dine with other people, look, I've done it in the past myself, there's no friendlier place to make new relationships and new acquaintances than Walt Disney World. You might be standing there, Bonnie, at the exit of Aladdin's Magic Carpets with another single mom that's waiting for her kid. Next thing you know, you start talking. Next thing you know, you're on the Jungle Cruise together. Next thing you know, you're eating at insert great Disney World restaurant here. So those relationships are there too if you want to try and make them while you're in the parks. Yes, that's happened yeah, that's as good. well to me at um, Mouse Fest last, last year. I met I was uh, actually with my niece that time, but <laughs> single aunt, <laughs> I guess that's what I was. And I met up with another single mom and we, we hung out, you know, for Mouse Fest. So it, it, you're right, Lou, that's a great place to, to meet other people. And another place, I mean, is the Disney community online through Twitter and Facebook and the podcast. I mean, I've gotten a lot of friends, you know, married and single and whatever online. And who knows, you might eventually be in the park together or be there at the same time. I mean, it, it, the Disney community is a wonderful uh, community to be involved with. I mean, I can't say enough. I mean, I've got friends all over the world. And it gives you that social aspect that you kind of need as a single parent mm-hmm. uh, because sometimes in your regular normal life, you, you do not get a lot of social interaction with other adults. So it's very helpful to have that outlet too as well. Yeah, and as we start sort of wrapping things up, I wanted to talk about maybe some tips that you have or your best tips for single parent. The one that I was going to talk about was exactly what you mentioned, Mark, was take advantage of the resources before your trip and even after your trip. So if you you have advice uh, to share with somebody, pay it forward after your trip and share it on the many resources that are out there. I know we have um, at WDW Radio, we have an online discussion forum there one of many that are out there but i've i've watched the conversations take place and say hey i'm a single dad going what do i expect hey is anybody else going to be down there and want to meet up for a meal because i I'm, I'm a little nervous to go for the first time and you watch like you said bonnie those relationships form and take place but there are plenty of resources out there to get tips to meet other parents and then like i said if you have any that you find during your trips, you should definitely pay those forward as well. What about you, Bonnie? One of your best tips and then Mark. Um, I agree with what you, you said. I think it's a it's a great time to go to Disney as a single parent with all the resources that are out there. Um, it, you can do your homework. It's, it's very easy to... Uh, to get the knowledge that you need to um, make it a successful trip, and I, and I just think that you know it's it's a great opportunity to spend some time with your kids and make some great memories, and you know, do what you have to do to to get there. It's uh, you will have a good time, and don't be scared. There are you know, it, it's it, there's so much information out there that you can know a lot before you uh, before you get there and then as you want to go back learn more like you said afterwards um, do your homework I guess is my is my best tip so you don't don't just you know show up at the gate without really knowing what you're gonna do next what about you mark what do you think is your, your best tip for somebody who's traveling to Walt Disney World as a single parent so I've given you a bunch of them already but um I would echo Bonnie that, you know, it, it's all about spending time with your your children, and, you know, quality time. And I've had such quality time with my son and made so many just lifetime memories there that I know of no other vacation place, you know, in all the world that 
you can do that in and where everything's right there where you you don't have to worry about how you're going to get get somewhere and a lot of this stuff is taken care of for you like where you're going to stay and transportation and food you know and we've eaten some incredible meals there at, at Disney World especially with the free dining there but we probably wouldn't be able to afford it you know normally and usually I'm saving up all year to go on a vacation with my son so I mean it, there's now single parents don't usually have a lot of money, but it can be affordable if you make that your goal and you work together as a family to get there. But I mean, I just want to encourage everybody that Walt Disney World is very, it's a very open place for single parents to go and take a vacation. And once you've done it once, you're going to want to do it again. And it's just, it's the best place in the world you can take your kids, whether single or married or whatever. It is, and if I can uh, say one more thing, you know, since my children are older, they, you know, and I took them there as a single parent many, many times, and then they kind of got to where they didn't want to go as much, and now um, my 20-year-old, I'm about to go tomorrow to Animal Kingdom with him and his girlfriend, and uh, now he's he's getting a new interest in it, and it's it's kind of neat to see. We went to Epcot a few weeks back with his girlfriend who had never been there and he was the little tour guide and you know he couldn't wait to get her to try some Beverly and you know so (laughs) (laughs) I said wow I taught him well and and it was just neat to see you know that he really did enjoy it and it was you know it was great because now he's yeah, he, in the tour guide himself. <laughs> he has a new interest now because she has a new interest in it. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> the other thing I want to say, and this, and we touched on this briefly, but I think this is the most important tip that I would give to somebody who's looking to stay, is stay on property. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Not just because of the Disney magic and the theming and everything else that you get, whether you stay at value, moderate, deluxe, or go all out and, and go DVC, is that... First and foremost, Mark, you said this before, everything is taken care of for you. So getting to and from the airport, you don't have to worry about, you know, I have to find a bus or get my kid in a cab or where are we going to go? You take Disney's Magical Express. Once you're on property, you don't have to worry about renting a car and getting lost and finding your way around and parking and and getting separated. You take Disney transportation. Um, it, it's readily available. It's obviously free. It can be fun depending on where you stay. I love taking the boats like to Wilderness Lodge or the Friendship Boats if you're staying on the uh, the boardwalk area, things like that. Uh, that's, the I think, the biggest, biggest tip. And like you said, Mark, too, you can get some great discounts as well if budget is a consideration. But uh, I, think, I think we all agree that as a single parent, there is probably no better place Listen, as any parent, there's no better place to take your children. But as a single parent, especially for that comfort level, for that safety, for that security and those ability to have not just the place, but the cast members and other people help create some of those magical memories that you want to savor with your children. Walt Disney World is the very, very best place to go. So Bonnie Smith and Disney World mom slash dad's panel member Mark Lorenzo. I want to thank you guys for coming on for sharing your personal experiences as well as your tips with the listeners. Thanks, Lou. It was, uh, it was, uh, great to, great to talk to you guys. And, uh, I hope we've encouraged some other single parents to, to go ahead and take that step and bring your kids down. It's, you will not regret it. Yep. Come on down. It's the water, the water's nice. It's time for another Walt Disney World Trivia Contest. It's been way too long since I've done one of these on the show. And in the past, I've done everything from Name That Disney World Tune to What's My Line, Where Have You Heard This, simple Walt Disney World trivia questions, and lots more. But this week, we're going to try something new yet again, where you don't need to identify a song or a quote 
or even test your knowledge of Walt Disney World tr- history or trivia. Maybe a bit, because Chip and Dale might make a great pair, and we all love the Fab Five. But for this week's contest, we're going to look at threes, because I'm looking for things that are sort of the last piece of a puzzle that have three parts. I'm going to give you a list of ten pairs of items and ask you to identify what the third missing item is. So, for example, I might say Huey and Dewey, and obviously the answer would be Louie, Donald's three nephews. Or I might say Rock and Roller Coaster and Beauty and the Beast. There, I'm looking for Tower of Terror, the third attraction on Sunset Boulevard over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So they won't always be obvious. You may have to try and find the common thread between them, not necessarily just the third in a group or, like I said, three relatives or three characters. So if I said Aloha Isle and El Parada y El Perico, of course I'd be looking for the Sunshine Tree Terrace, the third counter-service dining establishment in Adventureland. Some are easy, very easy, and some are a little tricky, but hopefully you're going to have some fun. So if you get the idea, here's your list. Again, I'm going to give you 10 in this list of threes. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to be looking for the third. Here we go. Number one, Bunny, Bubbles, and... Number two, Dorothy, Dinah... And number three, Ranchos Cabanas and question four, Melvin Buff and question five, there's movies, there's music, and there's also blank. Question six, the Hall of Presidents. The Liberty Square Riverboat and blank. Number seven. Dumbo, Aladdin, and blank. Question eight. The American Adventure, the Liberty Square Riverboat, and blank. Question nine. Contemporary. Polynesian and blank. And question 10. Asian, Venetian and blank. So there you go. There are your 10 list of pairs. I'm looking for the third in the group or the third character or the third attraction, whatever it might be. And I need you to email your answers to lou at wdwradio.com. Put contest in the subject line, and you'll have until 11.59 p.m. Saturday night, May 30th. So I'm going to give you two weeks for this one. And what can you win? Well, if you get all 10 correct, I'll put yours and other correct entries into the virtual hat. I will randomly select one winner who will win a subscription to Celebrations Magazine, a one-year subscription to Celebrations Magazine. So... Like I said, just trying something a little bit different this week. Hope you have some fun with it. Maybe even figure it out, some of the puzzles along the way. Again, you have until almost midnight on Saturday, May 30th. Email your answers in. Good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks so much for taking the time and tuning in. Also, thanks to my guests, Bonnie and Mark, on the Single Mom segment. If you have any tips, ideas, or thoughts that you want to share, come by this week's show notes at wdwradio.com and comment uh, about the segment or anything else that you've heard. You can also comment on our daily blog posts, check out new photos, videos, trivia, vacation planning, lots, lots more right on wdwradio.com don't forget next week is the 24 hour live video broadcast and chat from Walt Disney World 
And if you can't make it out to the parks to join us, you can watch for all 24 hours over at www.radiolive.com. I'd suggest before we get started or before you log in, head on over to Ustream.tv. Sign up for a free account there. That will allow you to chat in the chat room while you're watching. If you are going to be in Walt Disney World on Saturday, May 22nd, I invite you to please come by the Studio Catering Company over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. We'll be there broadcasting from 2 to 4 p.m. It's also Star Wars weekends. Lots of fun, exciting stuff going on. That night, we also have the Private Illuminations Dessert Party. That is sold out, but again, you can watch online. Again, I invite you to come by anytime or all time during the 24-hour live show. Please help keep me awake in those wee hours of the morning. Other events coming up include future meets of the month. I'll announce June's dates very, very soon, exact location and time. It will likely be the weekend of June 12th, which is the Expedition Everest Challenge. Uh, Over in August, there's the Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet at pnwmousemeet.com. That's Saturday, August 14th at the Linwood Convention Center in Linwood, Washington. I will be there again, as well as many other special guests, including Imagineer Bob Gurr, Margaret Kerry, authors, podcasters. There's a show and sale, so much more. Again, you can find links to Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet right on this week's show notes. In September, there's the D23 event, Destination D. We're looking to put together a group to head out for that. And in October, from the 8th through the 12th, is Congaloosh 2010. Again, I talked about that a few weeks ago on the show. There's a dinner after hours over at Disney's Hollywood Studios on the stage of the Indiana Jones Epic Sun Spectacular, a brand new show never before seen by guests by the Adventurers Club cast as the Adventurers Club characters. There's also going to be tours from Jim Corcus, a show and sale on Saturday, a banquet Saturday night with the Adventurers Club cast. I'll be doing uh, tours of the Jungle Cruise. We'll have other events going on on Sunday. Lots, lots more. For more information, to register, to join the WDW Radio Explorers Tribe, head on over to congaloosh.com. That is C-O-N-G-A. L-O-O-S-H. Again, links and information are in this week's show notes. And of course, can't forget about February 27th, 2011. We are inching ever closer to the WDW Radio Cruise aboard the Disney Dream. We'll have some more information, updates about special events and things we have going on there. For more information, you can go to WDWRadioCruise.com. Now, if you enjoyed this week's contest, like doing these kind of things, be sure and send, your, send me via email to lou at wdwradio.com your name and your phone number for a chance to play Listener Fact or Fiction. I'll randomly call a listener, ask you 10 true or false trivia questions about Walt Disney World for a chance to win a number of prizes. Again, please put Fact or Fiction in your subject line. Again, all I need is your email and your phone number, and you never know when I might give you a call. If you want to call me, be on the air, leave your message on the WDW Radio toll-free voicemail line at 888-703-2171. If you have a question about vacation planning, history, trivia, whatever it might be that you want me to answer on the air, you can email me at lou at wdwradio.com. Don't forget, please, come by the site at wdwradio.com. There, you can sign up for our free newsletter. Find a link to the Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter. Order signed copies of my Walt Disney World trivia books. Get the audio guides to Walt Disney World on CD or download. Still running the three-pack special. There you can also find a link to Celebrations Magazine. That's over at celebrationspress.com. To learn more, subscribe, order back issues, or even send us ideas for an article or a letter that maybe you want to submit. Again, visit celebrationspress.com. Thanks, as always, to my partners and sponsors, including MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. They are my official and recommended travel provider for all your vacation planning needs. You can find a link to their website right on the homepage, or you can visit mousefantravel.com and go to allstarvacationhomes.com. If you're looking to rent one of more than 150 homes within five miles of Walt Disney World, vacation homes offer pools, spas, kitchen, game rooms, lots, lots more. For large and extended families, it's a great option. 
And if you have an iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad, head on over to the iTunes Store or click on the link on the WDW Radio homepage to download the WDW Radio iPhone app. It is fun. It is free. Gives you easy, instant access to all the information from the site. You can also contact the show. Find out what's coming soon exclusively in the Coming Soon page there. There's lots, lots more. Great way to get a little bit of free Disney magic on your device, whether in at home or in the parks. My gift to you. Again, download it. If you like it, please rate and review it. And, of course, let others know about it. And finally, you know that that's all I ask you to do each week is if you like the show, please help spread the word and tell others about it. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, tweet out or post about the show and share links over to it to people that might not know about it. And, of course, most importantly, I hope you guys have a great, great week this week. I hope you do follow your dreams and follow your passions and take that first step towards making them come true. And I hope to see lots of you next week at the 24-hour live show. Really, really looking forward to that. Should be a fun time. Please come by in the parks or on www.radiolive.com. Have a great, great week, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. See ya. Hey, Lou. It's Dom Z and Angela Z here at the Beach Club. Uh, just kind of wrapping up our vacation here. It's been a beautiful time. And I just wanted to say thank you for your podcast. I've been listening to them when we spent a couple hours by the pool and your interviews with uh, Becky Mankin and Jim Corcus and Tim Foster. Um, they're such uh, great sources of information that when I go to the parks and kind of just stroll around, so many things come back and just makes the whole experience so much better being down here at Disney World. Two things I wanted to kind of point out about our trip. Um, maybe it's a suggestion for a future show. Uh, maybe it could be called Right or Left. Um, we went to uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean, had to make a choice of which queue line to go to, right or left. Um, not sure which one's shorter. And also uh, with the... Um, Tower of Terror, when you get into the boiler room, uh, you have to decide right or left. Maybe uh, you know which one is probably the, the quicker one. Um, that would uh, be uh, some great information that we would definitely use in the future. And also, uh, we had uh, probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience when we were getting off the friendship boat coming from Hollywood Studios, and uh, we saw the space shuttle take off, the, uh, the 220 uh, lift off, and uh, it was just incredible to see that ball of fire go into the, into the sky. And uh, being on at Disney, coming off, the, you know, a boat coming to the beach club, and just everyone getting so excited to see it just disappear uh, definitely once in a lifetime. So uh, thanks a lot for your show, Lou, and, and keep up the great work. And once again, I want to thank my brother and uh, his wife, uh, Joe and Stacy, for the points to, to have this great uh, vacation happen. So uh, take care, Lou, and see ya. Hi, Lou. This is Tina from Ottawa. Um, I don't know if you'll have time to take this on the podcast today because uh, this is Sunday, May 16th, but I just I thought of it a second too late. Well, a few days too late, but I want to call to wish my Disney geek husband amazing and he's also Canadian box guy on the forums and stuff. Uh, a happy 40th birthday yesterday. He's a big 4-0 now, and uh, we just had a really nice celebration with my our, our two boys, Maddie and Ty. And uh, I was going to surprise him. Well, I, I've told him now, but I was going to surprise him and fly the, us all down to Disney World and so we could be in Disney World on his 40th birthday. But since we just got back, from Disney World um, at the beginning of March when we first when we finally met you there uh, we decided uh, well we talked it over and decided we're going to go in October to experience the Food and Wine Festival leave poor Maddie and Ty at home and uh, hopefully we'll run into you there too so um, that's our plans and we're looking so forward to it and uh, yeah so happy birthday happy 40th birthday to the most amazing um, husband in the world, and I love you very much. Bye now. Oh, sorry, Lou, I should say, see ya. <laughs> Bye now.
Hey, Lou. Uh, my name is Ryan Mullenix. I have this amazing bride I really want you to meet. And it turns out that our uh, honeymoon is going to be next Saturday during the Illuminations uh, private ceremony. And we have tickets. So I hope that you can meet my, uh, my wife, Jo, Johanna. And I uh, look forward to seeing you very soon. Uh, thanks, Ken. Hey, Lou. It's John from Atlanta, Georgia. I just went into Fortress Books here in Kennesaw, and I picked up your two copies of your Walt Disney World trivia books, Volume 1 and Volume 2. I'm looking forward to digging in them and learning the thousands of secrets that I did not learn when I was a Disney cast member. I love the show and everything, and planning on a Disney trip to uh, Epcot in October for Food and Wine Festival, so... Hope uh, you guys, you're going to do a meet of the month and everything. I'd love to plan my trip around that to get to meet you and everything. And uh, just keep up the good work. And remember, Luke, just have a magical weekend. I can't wait to hear the new podcast uh, coming up and everything. And I love the behind the scenes with Bridley Peterson and everything. I thought it was amazing and everything. So um, it's all the listeners and everything out there and everything if you want to. Um, you know, learn more about Disney and everything. Um, just read up on it and stuff. I love it. I love the company. And I also wanted to tell you, Lou, that I am official. I just got my official B23 membership, so I'm looking forward to the 2011 Amazing Expo out in California. So I look forward to that. You guys all have a great and a magical weekend, and hope that it gets on the show. Talk to you later, Lou. Bye. Hey, Lou, it's Carrie. I was just listening to this week's show, and all your food talk with Tim Foster is making me totally hungry. But I wanted to call and tell you two things. I am a fellow New Jerseyite, or a former New Jerseyite living now in Florida, but I'm totally with you on the bagels, and no, people don't know what bagels are except the ones from Jersey. But uh, whenever, and I've got my husband who grew up in Chicago hooked on them now, and every time we go to Jersey, we bring back like two dozen bagels, so... Next time you go up there, bring them back, and actually they freeze really, really well, and you just take them out in the morning, and by the time you get to work, they're usually defrosted and ready to eat. And then you have that little piece of home. And the other thing is, uh, also one of your recommendations, uh, a couple weeks ago when you did the live review at Parody, so 37, I went there with my family. My dad was in town, and we went over there for dinner on Saturday night, and it was awesome. All the staff were, like, awesome, and the food was great, and one thing that you guys didn't mention probably because you didn't have to worry about it when you were there was the kids' portions. My daughter was there with us, and the kids' portions are, like, huge. Um, she had a grilled chicken kids' meal that had grilled chicken and roasted carrots and then had macaroni and cheese, and she cleaned her entire plate and then wanted dessert, which she mooched off of our chocolate cake. So thank you for the great me- recommendation. I totally wouldn't have thought of it um, until I heard the show, so keep up the great work and hope to see you at your 24-hour broadcast. All right, bye. Hi, Lou. This is Dom Zamponia and Angela Zamponia sitting here on the beaches outside the beach club overlooking the boardwalk yacht club. And I just want to say uh, we're listening to your show. Uh, we have to our... Actually, they're setting up the screen. They're going to be showing Alice in Wonderland. we got the uh, bonfire outside the beach club making uh, it's about 8 o'clock, and uh, it's a beautiful, warm night here. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, the fireworks to go off at Epcot, and uh, we just want to say thank you to our, uh, our our family, Joe and Stacy Zamponia, who lent us the uh, the DVC points for us to have these down here in Disney World, and uh, we're having a great time, and uh, we're down here, but... Uh, we enjoyed the uh, we enjoyed the, the no way today on your recommendation. So uh, hope to see you soon, Lou, and keep up the great work. See ya. Hey, Lou, it's Carrie again. I just listened to the rest of the segment on the top ten counter service area, uh, food ser- counter food service places in Walt Disney World, and I'm calling to back you up on the pizza because it's the water. Same with the bagels, like I talked about on my last phone call. And in general, Florida is awful for pizza. But I've been here about 10 years, and I uh, moved to Titusville to work out at Kennedy Space Center about three years ago, and I have found a place. So if you ever make it to Titusville, um, you know, shuttle launches, which is only about three left, so 
if you want to make it over the extra 40 miles east, come to Titusville, and there's a place called Valentino's, and the people that uh, own the place are from home, and they know how to make good pizza. It's, it's the closest to home pizza that you can get in Florida, at least in my opinion. So that's my daughter. She's saying hello. Um, so keep up the great work, and talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, Lou. Todd from Jersey again. How's it going? Just finished listening to the podcast with uh, you and Tim uh, Bananas Foster and the top ten counter service restaurants in Disney World. And as you asked for, here it comes. I don't know how you left it off, but uh, Cosmic Rays Star Lake Cafe. When I think of a counter service, that's the first place that pops into my head. And it's the one place, even though it is burgers and fries and chicken nuggets, with some chicken and other things mixed in, that is the one counter service that I can think of that I have to eat at at least once per trip. Uh, not necessarily about the food, more about the ambiance and a little show from uh, Sunny Eclipse that kind of gets us in the mood. Sometimes it's the first place we hit, sometimes the last place uh, on our trip, and it's awesome. So keep making the podcast, keep making lists, keep making the books, everything is great. Keep up the great work. Thanks again. See ya. Hi, hello. This is Tammy, and here's my only little twist on your beginning intro song. WD, hey, WD, and WD Radio. WD, WD, WD Radio. Your information, your information, your information station. WD, WD, WD Radio. Have a good day.